my dudes, welcome back to the beginning of another hopefully weekly vlog. I feel like I've just been making like 10 days, two week kind of vlogs recently. So hopefully this will be a weekly one. <sighs> yeah, so not a weekly vlog. Didn't quite, didn't quite manage that. It's actually gonna be closer to a monthly vlog. I am so sorry. It's been a time, but I hope you'll enjoy the vlog anyway. I'm sorry, please don't hate me, I love you, bye. <laughs> We're on the last week of the month, so in terms of the TBR, I still have five books to read by the end of this week, well, by Saturday, and it's now Monday, so will this happen? Let's see. The ones that I have left are all sci-fi. I saved them basically to just do a sci-fi vlog. It may get conf this might have not been a good idea because these could all mash up in my brain if I read so many sci-fi books in the same time frame, but, I'm gonna try it anyway. So for the books I'm hoping to read this week, firstly we have Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey. This is the first book in the Expanse series. There's a lot of books in this series and there is um, the TV adaptation, The Expanse. It's about 560 pages, so I'll be very proud of myself if I can take this down this week. <laughs> Secondly, we have Cryer's War by Nina Varela, which I have a bookmark in because I started it, but I'm only on page eight, so no thoughts really. Still confused, Not don't really know what's happening. I think our main character may be an AI, which I don't think I'd heard anybody say, so I could be wrong, but I mean, the writing so far is good. <laughs> And it also features a female, female romance. Um, I know very little about this book to go ahead and say that it's a five star prediction, but I did put it in my five star prediction video. I don't know, I just have a feeling about it. Sometimes you just have a feeling. So I'm hoping I'm correct. And then I have two shorter ones, which I should be able to get to this week, no problem. We have This Is How You Lose The Time War by Amel L. Motar and Max Gladstone. This one again is a female, female romance. I'm pretty sure it's told in letters. It's about two characters who are on the opposite sides of a war, but they start writing to one another and they fall in love. I think the sci-fi elements come in because they are fighting a war in time or something. So time jumps, not sure. Heard a lot of hype, have a good feeling about this one as well. And then, this one I've been wanting to read for so long, this is Binti by Nnedi Okorafor. This is a YA sci-fi about a girl who wants to go to a university, a very prestigious school in the galaxy. I think it's mostly about um, her journey and what happens along the way. I'm not 100% sure, but it's really short. So that's the TBR for this week. So I'm just on my lunch break just now, it's Monday. I need to get back to work, but then when I come back to you, hopefully tomorrow, I will have read some. So I want to read some more of this, and I also want to start Leviathan Wakes because this scares me. So I'll give you some thoughts on those tomorrow. In terms of this week, it should be a good one. Um, I'm actually going to an Alice Oseman signing on Thursday, so that's exciting. And I, oh, so adding, as well as the sci-fi, I'll probably be reading Hearts of Volume 3 this week as well because I'd like to read that before I go to the signing. So adding that one in as well. Let's just see if I can do it. So I'll come back to you when I have thoughts on books. Hello, it is Wednesday. Don't say it, don't say it. My dude, I have been reading. I've been reading The Cryer's Raw. Cryer's Raw? Raw, Raw. The Cryer's Raw. So far I'm feeling a little bit meh about it and maybe it's just me, maybe I will enjoy it more in the second half. It's just not wowing me. I had high expectations for it though, it is a five star prediction. It's one of those instances where I like everything about the book but I have to ask myself, did I read this when I was in a bad mood? But I have a feeling I'll really like it in the end because it is really interesting. It's set in a world where something called the Otome, which are creatures that are made. Now I want to say robots, but I don't think that's the right term because they're not mechanical, I don't think. I don't think that's how they work. Basically there's something called the Iron Heart, which is some kind of magical substance that they have to drink in order to stay alive. So that's pretty interesting. When I read the synopsis for this, I thought it was aliens or robots. And it's not really either. The Otome are now the ones in charge. They took over from the humans and they basically rule over the humans and the humans are essentially slaves to them. So we have Lady Cryer to begin with, who's the daughter of the Sovereign, so she's an Otome. Probably not pronouncing that right, maybe I should try the audiobook. And then we have a human character called Isla or Ayla, 
not sure. And she wants revenge for the deaths of her family, so she wants to kill Lady Cryer and she's managed to become a handmaid or something to Lady Cryer. So that's how them two are introduced. There's a lot of politics, which I'm always all for, but I feel like I know exactly the direction this is going. I hope it does surprise me. There's been a couple of little reveals and I've been like, yeah, I saw that coming. So I don't know about this. Maybe I just started it when I was in a bad mood, but I will be hopefully finishing it out today and hopefully have more positive feelings. There's nothing wrong with it. That's the thing. It's just not wowing me yet. But this afternoon, I'm actually going to the charity shops. I haven't done that in so long. I don't have the itch to buy any books or anything. I just miss the thrill of the hunt. Yes, I don't get out much, but my local charity shops are so good. I found some really good books before, so I just missed having a look around them. So I might not get anything, but I might. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take you along with me. Also probably gonna go to a coffee shop. I don't think I'm going to read Cryer's War in the coffee shop though. I think I'm going to start This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amel L. Motta and Max Gladstone because I'm just really excited to give it a go. <laughs> so my main aim is to get these two read today. And then I would like to start as well, maybe Binti or how to stop a volume three. I either want to read this today or tomorrow at some point, maybe on my lunch break, because I have the signing tomorrow night. I'm really excited. Actually, G can't come anymore. It was G and I that were going to go together. Um, she might be able to, but she's not been very well. She's got, we think, the flu. So that really sucks that she might not be able to come with me to the signing. I hope she does feel better tomorrow and we can go together. If not, Massey's going to come with me, bless him. So yeah, I need to get this read as well. I'm really excited, but um, yeah, that's what's happening today. <laughs> long in the coffee shop so I didn't read that much of this is how you lose the time war because I think I went there at the wrong time of day it was full of rowdy teenagers and I just felt really awkward <laughs> like getting my camera out to vlog and also it was just really noisy so I couldn't really concentrate and this is confusing I am only I used a napkin <laughs> as a uh, bookmark are we proud usually like before I would have just dogged this but I am on page 23 <laughs> It's one of those where it just dumps you into the story and doesn't really give you any build up or really tell you why things are happening or what things mean. So I'm gonna get that with the context. So I'm gonna continue with this this evening. I think it's, yeah, it's just around 200 pages. So I should be able to get done with it. I'll give you more thoughts when I have them <laughs> because right now, I don't know. I did think though that it was going to be all told via letters and it's not, although we do have a letter usually, well, so far, in each chapter or section. And I feel like there's gonna be a lot of witty banter between these characters, so I'm excited to continue even though I'm completely lost. Whole time, I got a couple of books. One of them I have read, one of them I haven't read, starting with the one I haven't read. Pretty excited to find this. I had this on my wish list actually because my friend Lauren really likes this series and uh, the way she talks about it, I just wanna try it. It's one of those where I really don't know how I'm gonna feel about it. And it's Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco. Um, there's three books in this series, I think. There's Stalking Jack the Ripper, then there's Escaping from Houdini, and something else. <laughs> this one's set in Victorian times. We follow a character who wants to be a mortician, but that's not usually the place for women in society at this time, so there's a lot of commentary on that, I think. I have heard <laughs> very mixed things about this. Some people absolutely love it and some others get really annoyed with the uh, main character. So I don't know which way which way I'm gonna sway, but I'd be interested to give it a go. So do let me know your thoughts if you've read this book or this series. Do you think I'll like it or do you think it will just annoy me? <laughs> and secondly, I found If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I really like this. Yes, it does get compared to The Secret History a lot, which I love as well because Dark Academia vibes. <laughs> in this one, we follow a character called Oliver who has served 10 years in prison for a murder he may not have committed. On the day of his release, um, a detective, the detective who actually sent him to prison, comes and visits him and asks him for the truth of what actually happened. So he's recounting everything that happened 10 years earlier, all of the events surrounding the murder and um, everything that happened between him and his classmates who were 
are all actors and uh, really into Shakespeare so if you like any kind of Shakespearean <laughs> influences in books this one is really really good. <laughs> and when I read it I actually had out a copy from the library so it's nice to have my own copy now. It was only £1.50, not bad, I have to take these stickers off but yeah also I think my friends, well one of my friends may like this so I'm gonna push it onto her to read if she fancies it although I've pushed a lot of books on her to read. So that's my little haul, I am now going to do some tidying up because I've neglected to do that today and Matthew's going to be home soon and he asked me to hoover and I haven't hoovered yet so I'm going to do that and then yeah I'm going to be reading this hopefully finishing out the cryos war as well and I'll probably give you an update maybe later tonight if not tomorrow with thoughts because I feel like I could enjoy this I don't know just really confused at the moment so I will catch you then. Does someone have the zoomies? Oh okay Hey my loves, so I know I always joke about how long I leave it between vlog updates but this time really takes the biscuit because it's been two weeks since I vlogged. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was going to start from scratch of a new vlog but I feel like maybe I can salvage this one. So yeah, things haven't been great with me. <laughs> for anyone who's watched my vlogs for a while you'll know that I can't vlog on bad days and um, towards the end of that week, the last time I vlogged, um, yeah depression hit me kind of kicked me in the stomach and that was crap and then just as I thought I was coming out of the fog and you know could get back to it I uh, ended up getting some kind of cold flu thing and um, that kind of took me out for a whole week as well and then the depression crept in again as well just when I was getting better so it's not been a fun time I haven't actually read anything in uh, two weeks but I did read what I said I would, well some of what I said I would at the beginning of the vlog in the last week of last month. So let's start with Heartstopper. So the last clip you will have seen before this one was me um, going to the Alice Oseman signing which was really really good, I had a really good time. Alice Oseman is just so freaking cool and I loved hearing her talk about her books, how she writes, how she illustrates and the Oseman verse in general, like the crossover characters. And I got my book signed, she was really really nice, I was really really awkward, I <laughs> things I wanted to say to her and then just bottled it. <laughs> but I did read volume 3 and oh my god, mwah, 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 I love, I love this series. It is just like a hug. This book feels like a hug. If you weren't aware this is volume 3 of her graphic novel series, they're also available on her Tumblr and oh it's a male male romance, it's very British, so adorable, so inclusive, the representation in here is always so so good, it feels realistic and the dialect, dialect? Dialogue isn't cheesy or anything. In this one there was a focus on coming out to friends and family and also we're delving into some uh, mental health stuff now which she said would be um, kind of in the forefront of the uh, fourth volume so I'm excited to see how that develops. I love seeing mental health done well. <laughs> And this was just a joy to read and um, to no one's surprise I gave this book five stars like I did the last two volumes. And I also read This Is How You Lose The Time War, Binti and Cryo's War as well so I'm going to try and be quick with my thoughts on these and I also read them like my thoughts aren't fresh basically because I read these like two weeks ago. But This Is How You Lose The Time War, this is such a weird and beautiful little book but man was it confusing, you have to suspend your disbelief, you just have to go with the flow, just let it envelop you. My favourite thing about this is the relationship which is the obviously the main plot point in this. I love the back and forth between the two characters, this had me chuckling a couple of times. I will say this language is not easy, I had to kind of reset my brain when I started reading this and some parts did feel like I was reading a classic, especially with the language being used in the letters, I had to look up some words, I felt like an idiot reading this, I'm still not sure I really understood it. <laughs> not that you have to to be able to enjoy it, it reminded me a little bit of the Starless Sea just because of the way it's told. Some of the plot points in here don't really make a lot of 
of sense or they might do but it's not really full, thoroughly explained to you so you just have to take it at face value so if you like your books to make sense this might not be the one for you <laughs> amongst the letters there are also snippets of them being on a mission what they call strands as they are traveling through time so our main two characters blue and red they will go on these missions and they will travel back in time to change something alter something in the past I think in order to give their side an edge in the future but obviously some things that they do can be undone by the other side one of my favorite things in this was just how inventive these characters were at leaving these letters they have to do them in really unique ways I don't want to give too much away and I loved that when one character would fail whether that be red or blue the other would write them a letter gloating about it at the beginning of this book basically calling them a loser and then you see their relationship grow and how they see themselves in one another it was a really sweet sapphic romance but it was really quick but that is probably because of the size of the book but I would have loved a little bit more development there just to make it a little bit more believable although really was this believable I this was kind of like a sci-fi but with some fantasy elements too I don't know it was just it was just weird but good um not for everybody though. Um, I did see on Goodreads a lot of people had said that they DNF this because they couldn't get on with the writing style which I completely understand. A lot of the converse in the letters does feel quite dated that's why I think it reminded me of uh, classics. I don't know man I thought it was quite charming and uh, just you know a little bit of whimsy in there as well. I, I liked it a lot. I did only give it a four well only I gave it a four star not only a four stars a good rating not a five um, just because I would have liked some more development between the two characters but yeah yeah weird wonderful really enjoyed it. <laughs> then we had Cryos War and I liked it I liked it, it's fair enough. It wasn't sci-fi though. <laughs> Remember how I was all like, I'm gonna read a lot of sci-fi books. Um, yeah, I read the synopsis, thought it was aliens or robots. It's not, it's basically magical people, people that are made by magic. So it's a fantasy story. Yeah, these automates are made of flesh. They're, you know, quite human. I think, well, yeah, they look like humans, just really tall, eerily beautiful humans. And although that's still really cool, I have some gripes with it, <laughs> basically. So we have these really cool magically made creatures but the setting feels just like a normal fantasy because the sovereign who's an otome who um obviously they're in charge and they oppress humans he has an obsession with being traditional so he basically makes it fashionable and the norm to follow human traditions so like everything looks like it usually would like there's no magicalness in the setting or anything or like the technology i think they still use horses and carriages in here but yet there's magical people i just wanted more mad i wanted more magic or some kind of technology that makes this different to what you'd expect from a fantasy story which is you know your kind of medieval setting so i was a bit let down by that because it felt like i've read this story before like it follows the same kind of plot line as a lot of the books i read but this one just felt quite generic i don't know if that's an unpopular opinion or not i don't know man maybe my expectations were too high for this one um i just feel like i've read this so many times enemies to lovers who challenge each other's prejudices and work together you know in the end kind of thing um which i don't mind in you know I, I could read that again and again if you add some interesting elements in there but this just i don't know it just fell short and i really did think i'd like this enemy to lovers sapphic romance in here but one side well one character felt a lot more underdeveloped than the other one to me her motivations were all over the place i swear i mentioned our human character isla she um basically got this job in the sovereign's palace to work for lady crier to get revenge on the sovereign and how she was going to do that was by killing his daughter so lady crier and obviously that's how the romance begins the relationship begins and at the beginning of this she's all out for revenge she's gonna do what she has to do to take her down and then <laughs> it gets murky I think too quickly I think that's my issue with it um yeah some of the things that she did in here I was like but why though it just made her a lot less believable to me and uh, yeah again I could have done a bit more um development in that relationship all that being said there was nothing really all that wrong with it I think my expectations were too high I just wanted more of the cool backstory of how these automates were made maybe that will be more in the sequel I think it will be so I might see what the reviews are like for the second book but this is like a three star book um you know just okay the writing was fine it just did not suck me in I just uh yeah nothing really surprised me it just underwhelmed me me 
Yeah, unfortunately, because it was a five star prediction, I can totally see why people would enjoy it and I would recommend it to a lot of people. Still try it if it sounds like it's gonna be something you'll enjoy. Just know it's not sci-fi. <laughs> it's more fantasy. I think that's what let me down. I just, I, I, yeah, I, I, I wanted robots or aliens, okay? <laughs> So that's on me. And then I read Binti and really liked it. This was, this was great. I wanna continue, I think there's a sequel. As I mentioned, this one's about a character called Binti who is being given a place at Uzma University. It's very prestigious, not a lot of people get in. But if she goes, she will be disowned by her family um, for leaving her homeland because no one, well, none of her people have ever left. So she's essentially giving up everything to go and get her education and, you know, go out into the world and make a name for herself and whatnot. But this mostly, actually, the whole book essentially takes place on the journey when she's on this spaceship. The big bad in here is an alien species called the Medusa, and that comes into play. I don't really want to tell you too much about that, but it's really interesting and definitely scratched that sci fi itch that I had after, you know, thinking that Crayer's World was a sci fi and it wasn't. <laughs> it's super quick, it jumps quite quickly, so sometimes I did have to go back and just reread a paragraph because I would, I, well, I wasn't overly concentrating clearly, and then I was like, okay, what's happening? But it's really cleverly done, there's not a lot of fluff, it's just, you know, quite straight to the point, but it's still really beautifully told. There's a lot of emotion as she meets people who don't necessarily respect her customs and see her as other because the Himba people stick stay to their homeland. They never, you know, go out and explore the universe. So it's uh, quite hard hitting to see her get looked down upon for her traditions and her customs. And I love how that was explored and the meaning behind everything and how she was, you know, still trying to keep that and still keep her identity, but also, you know, become a whole new person. And yeah, the interactions in it, it was mm, so good. I will say the ending didn't quite clinch it for me. I wanted something a little bit more hard hitting and it was just a little bit easy to guess what was going to go down, but it was still a really enjoyable short read. I read this in one sitting, as you can imagine. And uh, yeah, this was great. I see why it is so, you know, hyped and has received so much praise. I will definitely be reading more from this author. Gave it four stars just because the ending didn't quite get me, but oh, this was, this was lovely. Lovely is probably the word. And that's what I've read. Oh, I also did <laughs> Dark Leviathan Wakes, but I only got 36 pages in, so I'm gonna be reading this one in March as well. So 36 pages, I have I have nothing, I have nothing to share with you on that one. I uh, basically read 36 pages of that and then just stopped reading for almost two weeks. It's been a weird time. I haven't been able to concentrate on any books. I've also had like major sinus headaches and stuff. I've been binge watching a lot of reality TV. If y'all haven't watched The Circle, Circle is wild. <laughs> Both UK and US versions, just saying. But be prepared for it to take over your life and for you not to get any reading done. So maybe, maybe don't watch that. But whilst I've been away, I received, <sighs> I received some packages, y'all. <laughs> Look at this. Y'all are too kind as always. I've been waiting until I started vlogging again um, to open them. And uh, I, there was only a couple. And then over the last few days, I, I just seem to have received more. Like, what is what is going on? Um, but yeah, let's let's have a look and see what we've got. Um, I will try and be quite speedy because I am on my lunch break. And I need to get back to work because I have just been chatting about books for far too long. But let's have a look. Okay, so in this one, there's two. And this is from Kate. Thank you so much, Kate. Kate says, this was one of my favorite reads of 2019 and in my opinion, worth all the hype. I just want you to send you these as a thank you for making such great videos and for being so relatable and down to earth. Thank you so much, Kate. So nice. I don't know how to take these compliments, but thank you. And that was the note for this one, which is, ooh, Normal People by Sally Rooney. I've only heard good things about this book. So this is one of Kate's favorites of last year. I fully expect it to be a new favorite of mine from what I've seen. Um, I just know that it follows a relationship. It's set in Ireland and it follows a relationship between two characters. One character, I think it starts when they're at school. I'm not sure if it's all set in their teen years or if it goes into adulthood. But we have um, a boy who's very popular and a girl who's not so popular. And yeah, it just follows what happens between the two of them, their relationship, that kind of thing. And I've heard good things, well, great things about Sally Rooney. And uh, this is the one that I think appeals to me the most. So thank you so, so much. And then Kate says, 
I've only recently started watching your videos, but they're always my go-to. This is a book I really want to read, so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much again, Kate. Thank you for watching my videos. And it's A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I, I am in the mood for this. You know when I was in the mood for a good mystery thriller, but I wanted it to be like fun, so I picked up Truly Devious and didn't love it as much as I was expecting. Maybe this is the book. I know it features um, mixed media, like police interviews and things like that, and um, my friend Lauren really liked this. I think this will be such a, oh, such a fun read. So thank you so, so much, Kate, for these two. I am really excited, and it's nice to have something that's not, I mean, I love fantasy, but it's nice to have some options that aren't fantasy. Thank you so, so much. And then this next one is from Jade. Thank you so much, Jade. Jade says, I really enjoyed this book and I wanted to gift it to you, the first volume, so you could check it out. I hope you will enjoy it. Thank you so, so much. Oh, yay. Okay, it's Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. I have just seen so much hype around this. I feel like I'm gonna really enjoy it. I actually own one of his books already, which is City of Stairs, but I've heard more hype surrounding this one. So if my voice starts to go, I'm still getting over, you know, the sickness. I was not down with the sickness. I've made that joke before. <laughs> I don't know too much about this one. I just know we follow a character who's trying to steal an ancient artifact, I think. But yeah, it's been in a lot of um, kind of like sci-fi awards and things and I, <laughs> Robert Jackson Bennett is an author I need to try. So let me know if you've read his books. Should I start with this one or should I start with City of Stairs? Because I, I'm really eager to get to both. <laughs> Thank you again, Jade. I am hyped. <laughs> okay, so this is from Bethany. Thank you so much, Bethany. Bethany got me Crescent City. Bethany got me Crescent City. Thank you so, so much. I wasn't sure if I was going to read this. I was waiting on reviews. So many of my friends read this and loved it. You know I'm down to read this. Thank you so much. Bethany says... All the hard work you put into booktube really shows. Thank you. And I love your content. Thank you. You seem to like your chunky books. That I do. I hope this is no different. Also, snacks are a must for reading. May arrive separately. Oh my god, you sent me the Oreos. I got some Oreos. They're all gone now. And I thought it was a bit weird. Because <laughs> they didn't come with a note. But thank you so much. They fueled me through my sickness so thank you so much bethany and you've left your um socials too i'll be sure to message you thank you so much for crescent city and also for the oreos i wish i'd have opened this sooner and then i could have eaten the oreos whilst i was reading but i didn't i, re I regret that now <laughs> and i heard oh yes cut those end papers mm, stunning right <laughs> I am really excited for this. I think it's going to be so much fun and I just really want to read something fun. I might pick this up today. I should be reading Leviathan Wakes, but I might pick this up today. I know this one is a, I think, like paranormal um, urban fantasy story. I know a couple of the names, but I don't really know what the plot points are. I just know we have a character called Hunt. I think he is an angel. And then we have a character called Bryce, who I think might be human. And I think they team up together to solve a murder or some crimes or something in this city. I know that it includes a lot of different races of, um, you know, magical beings or fantasy characters. So yeah, I'm excited. How big is this? Just a casual 800 pages. <laughs> I may, I may read this immediately because I feel like I have been avoiding social media recently, but if I was to go on social media, I feel like there is a high chance I could be spoiled for this book. Thank you so, so much, Bethany. Oh my God, so spoiled as well. Thank you for that and the Oreos. You know your way to my heart, what can I say? Oh my God, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Guys, this is the Leatherbound um, classic edition of um, Sherlock Holmes, The Greatest Case of Sherlock Holmes. But I have a few of these editions already. I never actually expect anyone to like, what? Oh my, who got me this? <laughs> Caitlin, thank you so much. You did mention, thank you. Caitlin says, wanted to buy you Pride and Prejudice as well. No, you, this, mm, <laughs> but wasn't able to when I sent this, but you can never go wrong with my voice, Sherlock Holmes. Sending lots of love to you. Sending lots of love to you too, Caitlin. Thank you so, so much. And you actually mentioned that there was going to be more than one parcel, I think. So maybe another one of these is from Caitlin too. Thank you so, so, so much. I'll be definitely messaging you and uh, thanking you. Oh my, this is, this is a stunner. This is so beautiful. As I mentioned, I have 
the uh, I have Jane Eyre in this edition and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and um, A Christmas Carol too and when I worked at Waterstones because of my discount I got them in my discount and I would love to own all of them one day and um, wow you're helping me helping me with that goal thank you oh it's so pretty oh my god Caitlin oh my god thank you so so much wow oh and then we have a gift wrapped book um who is this one from Teresa thank you so much Teresa Teresa says hi Cody haven't seen you on booktube for a while I know and have been thinking about you thank you so much I hope you enjoy this book and it cheers you up thank you love you and your channel Teresa thank you so much Teresa I'm already cheered up I don't even know what it is but your kind words already thank you so much oh oh ooh, ooh, okay this is dark and deepest red by Anna Marie Mecklemore which I think I said that weird but Anna Marie Mecklemore is an author I've been wanting to try for quite a while I feel like she has that kind of magical realist or fam fabulous speculative whimsical charm or oh, that's what I've heard that I think I will like and look at this naked as well with the like little stamp here as well gorgeous I think this is her newest book um I have got another one on my wish list as well that I want to check out but I feel like I'm really going to enjoy this because it gives me 12 dancing princesses vibes because it's set in France and a strange sickness sweeps across the land where women are dancing in the streets without stopping some until they fall down dead. Five centuries later, a pair of beautiful red shoes seal themselves to Roselia's feet, making her dance uncontrollably. They draw her toward a boy who knows the dancing fever's history better than anyone, Emil, whose family was blamed for the fever 500 years ago. So that's all I'm going to read, but it's, it seems, seems like something I'm going to love. Thank you so, so much, Teresa. Let me know. Anybody, if you read this, your thoughts? <laughs> and we're on to the last one. Oh my god, it's huge. Oh my god. Whoa! Look at this chunky, chunky bind up. <laughs> Damn boy. Damn boy. <laughs> She's thick. So this is Sabriel, Lyriel, and Aborson, the Aborson Chronicles by Garth Nix. Now, a while ago, in a vlog I asked for recommendations of books that included talking cats and this was one of the main recommendations or like talking animals but specifically talking cats and this one came highly recommended it's one that's been on my radar for a while actually but look oh so flop so floppy and this one's from Sam thank you so much Sam um, they say hi Cody I know you had a difficult couple of months so I wanted to treat my favorite booktuber to a book yes I know there's loads of other booktubers but nominate me laugh like you do Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That means the world. And uh, yeah, thank you for your choice as well. Like I am, I am really excited about these books because who doesn't want more books with talking animals, right? <laughs> thank you so, so much, Sam. I will be messaging you as well. Oh my God. If, if anybody hasn't left me their socials and would like to, please link, well, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to message you or wherever you would like to be messaged to say thank you. Wow, guys, you've, you've done it again. <laughs> guys, I'm completely unworthy. Thank you so much for putting a smile on my face and spoiling me once again. You make picking my TBRs out very difficult when I do get a say. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. This has really cheered me up after a couple of shitty weeks um, but I think I'm going to put a pause on the wish list for a while so I can actually catch up on the ones I've already got and then maybe in the future I'll do like a PO box or something maybe um, so that you don't have to go through Amazon or something let me know your thoughts so my camera battery is flashing at me and I, I best go so I'm gonna maybe read this maybe not Probably will start Crescent City because I'm just I'm excited to give it a go you know and I will try and give you guys an update <laughs> tomorrow and I guess I'll just vlog throughout the weekend so see you later mashed potato I don't know <laughs>
So let me catch you up a little bit. So on Friday, we went to a lovely restaurant. We were careful. This was before everybody was um, self-isolating and social distancing, which we're doing now. But we figured it would probably, probably, <laughs> wow be the last time we'd be able to do anything like that for a while so yeah it was really really nice i should have got some footage of that i didn't take my vlog camera so hopefully the iphone footage was okay and that was absolutely delicious and also i filmed my wheel of tbr got that edited and uploaded thank the lord i'm so sorry it's so late that'll be linked in the description if you haven't seen it because i have a whole new tbr now which i'm about to spoil so it was these books and thankfully I was also able to get Crescent City on there because I have started this and I'll talk to you about that in a wee second. But in terms of this one's buddy read, which I have announced the winner for on Discord now because my wheel's been up for a couple of days. So um, the winner actually surprised me and it's In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. So I'm really excited for this book. I'm really, ex I'm just in the mood for a thriller. So the buddy read for this one will be over on my Discord channel. I will link that if anyone would like to join. I have to read it by the end of the month, but nobody else has to, like you can take as long as you want to if you would like to join in and discuss this with us. I am surprised it wasn't Crescent City because of all the hype right now but that is what I've been reading and I said in my TBR video I was only 50 pages in and I was very confused. The confusion continued for quite a while. I'd say I wasn't all that invested in the story or really had wrapped my head around it up until like the 200 page mark so I probably should have given you an update then but um, I got carried away and I'm now at the like I'm about 300 pages in. Yeah 310 and I like it. I'm just not in love with it yet. I'm glad I'm past the initial setup because I was just lost a little bit. I feel like it's one of those books though that um, if you don't retain all the info it's fine. You'll retain what you need to because there's not a glossary and usually if there's not a glossary like it doesn't really matter if you don't remember who is who and what is what to begin with. If it's relevant it will stick but I do wish there was another map. We have a map of Crescent City which is where this story is set and it's beautiful but they keep mentioning other places outside of the city and I just wish we had like a full world map. Again, if that was essential, it probably would be included, but I just, I like a map and I like to know. <laughs> I'm sure most of you do know what this book is. It's an urban fantasy, um, kind of high fantasy as well, I'd say, but I guess you could say it's paranormal romance as well because we have our main character, a woman called Bryce, who's in her 20s. She is half human, half fae, living in Crescent City, which is made up of lots of different districts who are all governed by different races of uh, magical beings. So we have fae and angels. Those are the ones in charge of the lands as a whole. And then we have um, vampires and werewolves. Basically there's different houses and that's at the beginning of the book as well which is helpful so that can be a bit to get your head around at the beginning but we do have a romance which will be a, a prominent thing in here because we follow Bryce who goes through a tragedy towards the beginning of this book and it does say in the synopsis that um, a demon murdered her closest friend so that's the tragedy she manages to get out of that alive and then we flash forward to two years later where there is an investigation into um, how that happened Happened, where this demon is from and she will have to team up with this hunky brooding angel called Hunt who has a fierce reputation he's known as the shadow of death he's got an interesting story and quite a tragic backstory himself and he's now enslaved to an archangel I want to say if that's right and Hunt is his assassin working off the debt of basically betraying them and there was a war between angels like a hundred or something years ago and he was on the side of the rebellion and they lost so that's how he is being punished and this archangel wants him to basically shadow Bryce and for them to work together to figure out what's going on with these murders as maybe the demon is back and we also have the search for a missing artifact there's quite a there's quite a lot going on so far the plot isn't gripping me that much but i do really like um bryce as a character she has her flaws she's strong but also vulnerable and there's a lot of banter and tension between her and uh, her love interest hunt so so far so good i don't have a lot of thoughts on it yet because i am 300 pages in which seems like a lot but it's an 800 page book so i'm not even halfway yet if you've read sarah j mass before i'd say the writing hasn't changed that much there's just um more violence and more talk of sex and uh, more cursing and everyone is incredibly beautiful which I think is to be expected from her books. Those are all the thoughts I really have so far on this one. It's okay I'm just not all that invested yet. I've been um, reassured that the second half is really good though like it's a lot more fast paced and I know this made it, like a lot of people cry towards the end so yeah looking forward to that. <laughs> 
And y'all, I received some more packages. I received two more boxes. And I have made my wish list um, private now. Um, so I don't know when these were ordered, but thank you so much. Um, let's have a look and see what we have. Okay, oh my God, oh, oh my God. Is this, yeah, oh my God. Okay, the note is from Caitlin. Thank you so much again, Caitlin. Caitlin was the one who sent me Sherlock Holmes and uh, they did tell me that I could expect something else. So, this is so, so generous. Caitlin says, hi, it's me again. I'm in a super giving mood at the moment and I know you said you liked the first volume of The Walking Dead. Also couldn't resist getting you my favorite classic from Caitlin. Oh my God, dude, this is way, oh wow. Oh my God, this is heavy. Okay, so like she said, we have The Walking Dead, but it's like a whole huge compendium. Like, so what? Oh my God, so I think this includes like the first eight volumes or so i'm not 100 percent sure but wow it is massive and i could just binge this thank you so so much and the favorite classic she was mentioning oh my god in this beautiful edition again we have pride and prejudice by jane austen this is wow she sent me sherlock holmes in this edition as well so i have five now and it's oh, this is probably one of my favorites just for oh just for the design of like the, is it peacock feathers? Yes, oh my God, it's absolutely stunning. And I love Pride and Prejudice and I haven't reread it in years and I really should. This is absolutely gorgeous and so very thoughtful and so generous of you. Thank you so much again, Caitlin, for these. Wow, I have been so spoiled once more, my God. And then in, oh, in here, which is also quite heavy, see if I can see the notes. Okay, oh no, that's the receipt. <laughs> Okay, this is from Joanna. Thank you so much, Joanna. They say, hi, Cody. I wanted to send you a little something to give you hopefully just a tiny bit of happiness in the crazy world we are living in right now. Thank you so much. Oh my God, so appreciated. I hope you're okay. Sending lots of love from Joanna. Thank you. I am, I, I will be, I will be okay. I hope you're doing okay as well. Um, so in this one, oh wow, okay. Oh my God, wow. We have um, Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. Isabel Greenberg wrote 100 Nights of Hero, which is one of my favorite graphic novels ever. It's five star, read it, it's so good. <laughs> and I put this one on my wish list because when we went to the Alice Oseman signing, this was one on one of the shelves near us and I recognized Isabel Greenberg and I didn't realize that she'd also had uh, Glass Town and I got really excited. <laughs> and the illustration style is stunning. It is really cool, for example and wow what a gift to get thank you so much i feel like this is just going to be incredibly lovely if it's anything like uh, 100 nights of hero it says here four children charlotte bramwell emily and anne have invented a world so real and vivid that they can step right into it can, but can reality be enough when fiction is so enticing and what happens to an imaginary world when its creators grow up plots are spiraling characters are getting wildly out of hand and a great deal of ink is being spilt welcome to glass town it just sounds so good i feel like i'm going to absolutely adore this and it's such a beautiful beautiful book thank you so so much joanna oh my god and they also sent me the winter of the witch by Catherine arden which is the third book in the oh i've forgotten the name of the series but i love the first and second book the first book is the baron nightingale it's a russian inspired adult fantasy series I've been wanting to finish out this series for so long and I just didn't pick it up and I'm so happy to have this copy. Thank you so much. It takes a lot of inspiration from Russian folk tales and fairy tales and it's so beautiful. And it has that, you know, that whimsy that I'm a sucker for. So thank you so much to, to Joanna for, for these two absolutely stunning books. Oh my God, you've definitely cheered me up. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you. I'm going to try and not get emotional right now because I just, that's all all I've been for the last week is like high key emotional but thank you thank you honestly it's so appreciated oh and Joanna if you want to leave me your social media and I can send you a message do please leave it in the comments down below and I can message you and say thank you I also bought a couple of books myself one I probably could have just waited and uh, got from the local library but I was too excited but the first one I want to share with you is the Believeathon Compendium. The second round of the Believeathon is happening, hosted by Gavin at uh, How to Train Your Gavin, my bay. I will link all the info in the description. He has an announcement video and everything, but he's also self-published these books and I had to, <laughs> obviously. This includes a foreword where Gavin talks about his love for middle grade and children's books. We also have the Believeathon 
map with all the locations for all the prompts. Of course we have the prompts in here and recommendations and then in the back we also have lots of people in the book community who have contributed um, and just wrote a little message about why they love middle grade so much and it's so bloody heartwarming and just the cutest thing and I will treasure this forever. <laughs> I'll also link where you can purchase this on Amazon if you would like to but you don't have to. If you want to join in you can um, also download this for free. Gab has made it available as well but I am hyped. I hope you are too. <laughs> and how cool is this as well? I swear I have like some of the most creative friends. Speaking of, who's excited for the owls as well? Anyway, yeah, I bought something else. <laughs> and it's because of Heather's influence, okay? Like anything that she rates highly, I wanna read immediately. If you haven't discovered her channel, link in the description. And she hyped this up so much and after reading and loving House of Salt and Sorrows on her recommendation, I just, I, I had to. And it's The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith. I did show it slightly in my TBR video as well. I could have waited to get this from my local library, but I had no chill. I really want to read this really soon. I feel like this could be my new favourite book. And here's why, okay, before, like, I'm just trying to justify this. Let me read you the back. Every book left unfinished by its author is filed away in the unwritten wing, a neutral space in hell presided over by Claire, its head librarian. Along with repairing and organising books, her job consists of keeping an eye on restless stories whose characters risk materialising, material, materialising, yeah, and escaping the library. <laughs> when a hero escapes from his book and goes in search of his author, Claire must track and capture him with the help of former muse and current assistant Brevity and nervous demon courier Leto. But what should have been a simple retrieval goes horrifyingly wrong in a chase that threatens to reshape the boundaries between heaven, hell, and earth. Doesn't that sound incredible? Like, I had to. <laughs> and I'm bummed I couldn't get it onto this one's TBR. Speaking of, this one's TBR. I have eight books to read in just over a week, so my next vlog, you can watch me struggle trying to do that. I am not going to say it's going to be a weekend vlog or a weekly vlog or even a two weekly vlog. We will just see how it goes because right now I'm all over the place and every time I say this is going to be a weekly vlog, it never turns into that. My current aim is a weekend one but we shall see. <laughs> because we are doing a little readathon over on my Discord again um, this month, um, to kind of really impromptu though, and I'm hoping to read In A Dark Dark Wood, as well as finish Crescent City. So I'm gonna leave it off here so I can get this edited and out into the world. This has just been the longest vlog ever. <laughs> I'm so sorry for being a chaotic mess, even more so than usual. I hope you enjoyed this vlog though. I hope it was a nice distraction from all the current chaos. I hope you're staying safe and doing all kinds of well even more so than usual. Um, let's chat in the comments, um, like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and I will catch you in the next one my dudes. Bye y'all.